parking lot and clear the roads, and um, we are here to worship the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to lift up His name and make His name great. And if you're visiting, welcome, glad to have you, and we're thankful to those that are able to watch online. So let's pray and thank Him for that opportunity. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you. It's not an accident that any of us are here today. You have drawn us here, and you have drawn us here to lift up the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray that we wouldn't kind of just check out and sit back and go through the Sunday motions today. Lord, I pray that you would engage our minds, engage our hearts, engage our spirit, that we would sing praise to you, that we would hear from your word, that we would confess what we believe, that we would hear the assurances, Lord, um, and that you would get all the glory. And Father, thank you for those that are able to... Um, participate online. We pray that the technology would work and stay strong throughout the service. And we thank you that we have that opportunity. Lord, we need you. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for this opportunity to lift up your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Part of Psalm 62 is our call to worship this morning. Diana's going to lead us in it, so let's stand and be called to worship by God for it.
Amen. You may be seated. She didn't have anything to click, so sorry about that. Oh, wait, yeah. I Go ahead. 
Well, let's say it together. And then we'll Bring in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Good. Good job. Now, everybody, everybody together. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. All right, but guess what? There's a lot more. Here's the next part. Cast me not away. From what? The Spirit. From the Holy Spirit. Oh, you're close. Cast me not away from thy presence. That means we don't want God to send us away from his presence. So can you say that after me? Cast me not away from thy presence. Cast me not away from thy presence. All right, we're going to do one more sentence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. All right, let's try the whole thing. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. There's one more that we'll do next week. This is good, you guys. This is Psalm 51, 10 through 12. Can you say that? Psalm 51, 10 through 12. Who made you? God. What else did he make? Everything. Why did he make you for his own glory? For his own glory. So he made the snowflakes, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. right. He made everything. Okay. Good. That's good. He made the war. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for these kids. They are amazing. And I thank you that they are memorizing your word. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. About meditating on your word and teaching it to the next generation. Let them grow up knowing your word, Lord. Knowing that you made them and you made everything. And let them teach that to the next generation. Thank you so much for each one of these young men and women and how awesome they are. Thank you, Jesus, that you love us. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, grab one, one minute each there. Okay. <laughs> Just as quickly as we jump into jump back into Revelation last week, we're going to jump out of it for a, a week, and that's because this is what is known as Sanctity of Human Life Sunday, and the scripture you have a, a preview of it. We sang it, Psalm one forty five. So if you turn to Psalm one forty five, I'm just going to look at verses one through nine this morning. Psalm 45, 1 through 9. Before we look at that, let's go to the Lord in prayer today. <laughs> Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the songs that we have sung, that you are our almighty creator. You created us to worship you. All glory goes to your name. Thank you for the assurance that we are forgiven by Jesus' sacrifice. Thank you for who you are according to what we confessed in our faith. Lord, thank you for the kids and their great start on memorizing that scripture. And I pray, Lord, that not only will they know it in their, their minds, but they will know it in their hearts. And that's the same thing for this scripture. Out of here going, boy, that was something I've never heard before. It's all things that we've heard before, but it's things that, Lord, we can so much take for granted. And, and so I pray that you would deepen within us the understanding that we are your creatures and you are our creator. And you are the giver of life. And the giver of eternal life. And, and Lord, I pray that we would then tell that, share that with the next generation. And we would do it to your glory and your honor. So I do pray that you would speak to your people from your word this morning. I do pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. You are my rock. 
You are my Redeemer. Lord, speak to your people from your word. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Psalm 145, I'm reading verses 1 through 9. Hear the word of the Lord. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds, and I will declare your greatness. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundance. slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love the Lord is good to all and his mercy is over all that he has made this is the word of the Lord thanks be to God around the United States and probably around the world today is known as sanctity of human life Sunday we live in a culture that means apart from God, without God. <laughs> Just last month, I, I heard a shooting in downtown Pittsburgh. I was 100 yards from it. I heard it. Apparently, we live in a time where caring for life is not even on some people's radars. Because the, the shooting I heard in downtown Pittsburgh happened inside of an Arby's, where two men saw each other who didn't like each other, and not caring one bit about anyone else in life, they just started shooting at one another. We live in an age where life is not value. Now on Sanctity of Human Life Sunday, pastors often speak about the horror of abortion. And rightly so, that's a worthy subject that needs to be spoken about. I would like us this morning to think even bigger. Think even bigger about what it's like living in a culture is the source of all life. The world around us completely ignores that. And sadly, sometimes even the church ignores that. So I would like to take a moment this morning for us to stop, reflect, and thank God for the gift of all life, specifically eternal. In an almost completely secular culture that's fixated on death, May we shine the light and life of Christ through us as we know him and share him with the next generation. In an almost completely secular culture fixated on death, may Jesus shine his light of life through us as we know him and share him with the next generation. I'm going to start with verse 9. The Lord is good to all. And his mercy is over all that he has made. Well, what is all that God has made? The kids just told you. Everything. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit created everything. Trying to make the case that Jesus is indeed part of the Trinity, that he is God that he was the creator, Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, writes this in Colossians 1. For by Jesus all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created. Things. 
John, same thing, inspired by the Holy Spirit in 1 3. All things were made through Jesus, and without Jesus was not anything made that was made. So when Psalm 145, verse 9, says that the Lord's mercy is over all that he made, his mercy is over absolutely everything. Now stop and think about that for a moment. The sunrise this morning, the mercy of God. A bunch of you have had calves born recently. The birth of a calf, the mercy of God. The healing of bruises and cuts in our bodies, the mercy of God. Strawberries growing and ripening and becoming ready to eat. The mercy of God. The human mind developing rockets that can fly into space. The mercy of God. The birth of a baby boy. The mercy of God. Now when we stop and think about that, the birth of a baby boy or the birth of a baby girl, that's where we begin to see the misdirection of our culture. If God created everything, and a baby boy is born, or a baby girl is born, then it is pure idolatry to say, well, we won't fill in the gender or the sex on the birth certificate right now so that they can decide when they are older. Putting yourself in the place of the creator. God is the creator of life. And we should honor him as such. Instead of us as a people saying, we can decide how we want to identify, we should say, thank you, Lord, for the mercy of a new life. Nowhere, in my opinion, nowhere is it more clear that we owe everything to God. Then Psalm 139, verses 13 to 16. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. This is David speaking to the Lord. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You washed me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Oh, that's incredible. We owe everything to God. Our society says, you decide about life. And that, of course, is where the abortion issue comes in. Our society says you decide what you will identify with and what you will do. Our society sees human lives as nothing more than tools to be used and abused. I was finally able to watch that movie, Sound of Freedom. If you haven't seen it, I would encourage you to watch it. It's a horrible movie. It's based on a true story, but it's about human traffic. We live in a time and place where human beings, little ones, are bought and sold. Well, that's not new, Pastor Jefferson. That's happened throughout all history. Yes, it has. And little ones are sold for the pleasure and the riches of those that can enslave them. We see this in our headlines every day, and it's evil. Our society says, you are your own God. You are in charge of your life, and you can treat others however benefits you. And the scripture says, we're not in charge of you. It's because of God's mercy that we have the breath of life. The Lord is good to all, and his mercy is over all that he has made. Told you you're not going to hear anything new today. Just being reminded of what you already know. So if God, his mercy, has created all things, how 
as believers in Jesus, should we respond? We should intentionally, intentionally fill our hearts with God's word, and we should give him praise. Verse 5. On the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. Do I spend enough time, do we spend enough time meditating on God's majesty, his splendor, his wondrous works? And think about this. God's most wondrous work is not creating apples. It's not even creating coffee. It's, it's not the human eye, which is unbelievable. It's not the law of gravity. It's not physics. His most wondrous work is providing salvation for rebellious human beings that he loves. Giving his own son as a sacrifice for sin so that those who trust in him will not perish to have eternal life. Do we meditate enough on his splendor, his majesty, and his wondrous works. If we do, if we look at his word and take it in and remember what he has done and meditate on it, think about it, chew it over, that should lead us to praise his name. Verse 1. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. I looked up extol. We don't use that word often in English. And it means to praise highly. Well, you know, and I know, that we live in an era where musicians, athletes, actors are, are praised highly. And God has gifted many people to do many things. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. But who are we supposed to praise highly? We're supposed to praise highly the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Because he made everything. Because of who he is. And because he's the giver of life. So may I remind you and may I remind me today to highly praise God. Seriously, in every instance. My car started today. Praise God. I had a cup of coffee this morning. Praise God. I woke up this morning. Praise God. Every day, verse 2 says, every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Notice it doesn't say every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock when I'm at church. Notice it doesn't say every Christmas and Easter. It doesn't say when things are going bad. It says every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. We've been given a gift of life and Jesus has given us a bonus gift. His life and his death and his resurrection have given us eternal life, relationship with God. May we meditate on that. May we praise him for it. And may we tell the next generation, verse 4, one generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. Now you know that one of my favorite bands of all time is Petra. Petra had a song, I think back in about 1986, called This Means War. And, and the song is actually addressing the devil. It's addressing Satan. And, and it ends this way by saying, now it's all over, down to the wire, counting the days to your own lake of fire. But you'll go down fighting for all that you're worth to try to abolish his image on earth. I said that normally on Sanctity of Human Life Sunday, you'll hear a, a, a sermon about a, abortion. Why would the devil want to get rid of as many children as possible? To try to abolish God's image on earth so that one generation cannot commend his works and declare his mighty acts to the next generation. In fact, when you think about it, this, I believe, is the devil's plan. Abort them, 
enslave them, as we've already talked about, indoctrinate them. I watched a great video on YouTube. The guy was walking the streets of Philadelphia, and he was recording it, and he was asking the question, can men get pregnant? And when he walked the streets of Philly, everybody laughed at him when he asked that question. You've got to be kidding. I mean, how are you even asking that? Get out of here, man. It's ridiculous. But then he left the streets of Philly and went to the University of Pennsylvania and asked the same question. The answers were very different on that college campus. Well, I suppose technically a man, well, I learned this in a class once. Um, it was a very, very eye-opening video to show what is being taught on college campuses. Satan's plan, abort them, enslave them, indoctrinate them, keep them from hearing anything about the gospel. And Satan's hope is that then Christianity will die out. One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. Part of us responding to God, his gift of life, Jesus' gift of eternal life, along with meditating on his wondrous deeds, as well as highly praising him, is to make sure we tell the next generation. And if we reflect on that, I'm not so sure that we, and when I say we, I don't mean Hanover Presbyterian Church. I mean the church in general. I'm not sure we've all done the greatest job of that. I always find it interesting when I talk to my parents and people their age, they, they kind of romanticize the 50s. Oh, things were so much better then. I'm not so sure they are, or they were. I've watched almost every episode of Leave it to Beaver. Wally and Beaver go to Sunday school every once in a while, but never worship, and more than you never go to Sunday school. Maybe the 50s was a better time. I'm not sure, other than the Garden of Eden, when people stopped telling the next generation about the Lord, but I do know that it's only gotten worse in my lifetime. I said we live in an almost completely secular culture, and I believe we have an almost completely secular generation in our schools right now. And they're not going to thank God because they don't see the need for him. They're not going to meditate on his word because they've been taught that his word and those who follow it are actually the root of all the problems in the world. They're not going to praise him highly because it's totally irrelevant to their life. And they're certainly not going to pass it on to the next generation. Well, that's pretty depressing, Pastor Jefferson. Thanks a lot. What do we do? We do what we can do. Each one of us has people around us. The philosophers call it your sphere of influence. We have people around us that, that look to us for friendship, for fellowship, sometimes for guidance. And in our sphere of influence, we determine in our mind, in our heart, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to thank God. He's the giver of life. I'm, I'm going to learn his word. I'm going to meditate on it. I'm going to thank him daily for the mercy that he gives. I'm going to praise him day by day. I'm going to make worship a priority, but I'm also going to praise him day by day. And I'm going to make sure that, that my kids and my friends' kids and my neighbor's kids and the next generation hears about God. Because he's amazing. And he created absolutely everything. And because he did, life is precious. Every person is made in his image. And the life he gave us is one of his wondrous works. The eternal life that he gave us because of his love 
And the life and death and resurrection of Jesus isn't most wonderful. Now, what, what can we do? We can resolve in our minds and our hearts to take in his word, praise him day by day, and make sure that next generation knows it. In an almost completely secular culture, fixated on death, may Jesus shine the light of life through us as we know him and share him with the next generation. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you. Again, I, I haven't said anything earth-shattering or new or unheard of this morning. But Lord, I trust that your Holy Spirit works that into someone's heart in a deeper way. Maybe someone was, was just taking it kind of for granted, forgetting to thank and praise you on a daily basis. That my kids and my grandkids and my nieces and nephews know about the Lord. Lord, maybe you're using this word today to bring someone eternal life, to bring them to salvation. Maybe your Holy Spirit has brought to life a heart, and that heart is burning and, and saying, I, I feel this, this need for God that I've never felt before. Pray they would respond by repenting and believing the good news and thanking you that today is the day of salvation. Lord, maybe there's one here that said, okay, I've been saved, I've been walking with Jesus for many, many, many years, but I needed to be reminded of his mercy that woke me up this morning. His mercy that walked me out the door. His mercy that brought me into this world. Lord, speak to us wherever we are and draw us a little bit closer on the journey to you this morning. And we thank and praise you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. There's a number of different ways that we respond to God's word, and one of them is by going to him in prayer. Uh, we mentioned in Sunday school, um, we praise God, we've been praying for Vicki's cousin Mary, she's doing better. We ask to continue to pray for Penny. Greg asked us to pray for his sister Beth, is that right? Beth? Um, we want to pray for those that are traveling. And then I asked if you would please pray for my friend Rob, who um, is dealing with cancer and will be going through an extensive journey over the next 10 to 12 weeks. And, and our prayer and hope is when that journey is over, they, his cancer will be gone. <clears throat> pray for those things, and um, I will leave a space if you have another prayer request that you want to bring to the Lord. Um, that you can do that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer again. <clears throat> Almighty Creator, one who made everything, one who gave us the mercy of another day today, one who gave us the mercy of this season, thank you. Thank you. What an amazing, amazing thing that the, the one who created all things and, and the one that loved human beings enough to come in and live and die and rise again then tells us as we know you, as we are in Christ, to cast our cares upon you. So Lord, we lift up these things I just mentioned. Get rid of cancer. And Penny and Rob. Lord, so many, Beth, so many other people that are dealing with these different variations of it. Lord God, thank you for healing, using doctors, healing miraculously, however you choose to do it. Lord, thank you for making people better. Lord, we pray for the ministries here to the next generation, thinking of the preschool, and thinking of Sunday school, and the kids club, and vacation Bible school coming up, Lord. 
pray for all of those things, Lord, that there would be a new generation coming up to praise your name. Lord, because you hear our prayers, I ask now that you hear from anyone that would like to mention something out loud themselves. God, thank you for hearing the things that we mentioned in the silence of our hearts. Pray for those who serve our country. We thank you for those that have been out clearing the roads over the last few days. We pray for those that are volunteer firemen and women. Lord, we pray for missionaries that go around the world to proclaim who you are particularly one that we know of through our presbytery is the ministry in Sierra Leone, and we lift them up and ask for your um, continued blessing upon them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you came. Thank you that you lived and died and rose again, and we can know you. Help us, Lord, to read your word and meditate on it to praise you every day and tell your works to the next generation. And now would you hear us as we come together and pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the king and the power the glory. Another way we respond to God's word is by giving of our time, our abilities, and the resources he's given us in the first place. So I would invite the ushers to come forward and receive the tithes and offering given <coughs> that have been given. Thank you that the message of Jesus may go out throughout western Pennsylvania and your world. And we pray that you would provide for every need of your people. Thank you, Lord. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated and invite you to look at your hand over happenings. After the benediction, there is going to be a annual congregational meeting. The purpose is to receive the, the budget that the uh, session passed, to vote on the terms of call, and to put together the nominating committee for 2024. So if you are a member, please stay for that. Um, if you're not a member, you're welcome to stay. Um, you just don't, can't vote on anything. Uh, Tuesday, 5 p.m., Lord willing, a uh, Bible study. I finally was remembered to put the book out there. So our book is out there for our pre-K cow, which is Lillian. So if you could uh, write on both books out there, 
their own a table in the narthex, that would be great. Um, several of you talked to me about uh, those in your family wanting to get baptized, and that is great. If there's anyone else, please let me know uh, soon so we can get going on that. Um, Three o'clock. If any of you would like to go, talk to me. Love to have you go along. Uh, we sing with the residents. We sing about four, five hymns with them. I give a shortened version of the sermon. And some of you are like, wait a minute, why don't I just do that? I give a shortened version of the, the sermon, and we pray and uh, enjoy being together with those residents there. So that's at 3 o'clock uh, this afternoon. Last one I'm going to mention right now is I'm excited to get started on Vacation Bible School. And that sounds like it's a long way off. Um, and on one hand, it is. On the other hand, um, it'll come quick. It'll come quick. So we're going to have a meeting at 7 o'clock on Thursday the, the 8th over in the Fellowship Hall for anybody. So if you know somebody from another church or somebody in the community that says, I would love to help with Vacation Bible School, I'll have them come to that meeting. We want to get going on um, setting things up so that when uh, that second week of June comes up, we're ready to go. And we're filling this room with uh, elementary age kids hearing about Jesus on the great jungle journey. Uh, the songs are, are pretty decent this year. I, I've been listening to them. And you can find them on YouTube, Great Jungle Journey, VBS, and, and start getting ready for those songs. Any other announcements that I'm forgetting? Ken. Yeah, preschool registration for current students was last week. This week is for uh, families of the church or friends of the church. So if you know anyone that wants to attend preschool in the fall, log on. Is there, is there a password? There is a password that I don't know. <laughs> they know those, right? Yeah. So. Okay, so she can give you the password any family or friends of the church. Then on February 1st, it opens to the public. We have brochures or flyers that Dana has prepared. She has them today. So if anyone knows somebody at Janowski's or Lulu's or whatever, we put a, a flyer there, we'd sure appreciate it to announce it for the public. That's for us on February 1st. We'd like to get them up this week, though. Awesome. All right. Our closing song goes along with this message of God creating everything and everything giving him his praise. It's not him. It's on page 63 if you want to look at it in the book. It will be on the screen. Let's stand and sing all creatures of our God. <laughs>
to the next generation. If you're a church member, please stay for the quick meeting that we'll have after the benediction. And again, if you're not, you're welcome to stay, um, but you're also welcome to, to head out. I mean, uh, safe travels out there on, on the roads. Now receive the benediction. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go to peace. Amen.